Seeing a fellow human being with a piercing in an unusual place might make you think, yikes, that looked like it hurt. But what if, like this gentleman at a religious ceremony in Malaysia, they told you, the gods demand it. Let's learn the fun size story of Mayan blood sacrifice and the penis glyph. With any religion, large or small, there's a common notion, foundational to our species, that whatever greater powers exist, they want nothing more than for us to deprive ourselves of the earthly pleasures that they themselves created. This may mean abstaining from certain foods, not parting to excess, or something much more sinister, our blood and our pain, or that of the individuals around us. There seems to be something deep-seated that has made people following a variety of different faiths hurt themselves or others to show their devotion to the gods. And maybe not much has changed since ancient times, but that hasn't stopped many societies from judging others for their gruesome religious practices. Enter the poster boys for gory religious beliefs, the Maya and the Aztec. You may be familiar with images like these. Ah yes, the bloodthirsty natives of North and Central America, plucking out hearts with their bare hands and tossing bodies down the temple steps. This notion is seared into our memory for a reason. It's very convenient for the Spanish to portray the conquered Mayans and Aztecs as violent brutes in need of some Catholicism in their lives. Never mind that the very symbol of Christianity is whatever. However, it is certainly true that the many civilizations of Mesoamerica, from the Olmecs to the Aztecs, believed that their gods needed to be fed with copious amounts of blood. Human sacrifice was a common type of offering to the gods, and often it was prisoners of war who were the victims. Most of these civilizations maintained a state of semi-constant warfare to ensure a steady supply of captives for sacrifice. In fact, this may have disadvantaged the later Aztec in their struggles with the Spanish. See, the Aztecs were playing for prisoners, while the Spanish were playing for the kill. Beyond, of course, fighting gunpowder, horses, attack dogs, and the real kicker, smallpox. But in these societies, there was also the expectation of personal blood sacrifice, especially among the elites. How did this work? The process was simple, and enough to make you cringe and sympathy paint. As a person making an offering, you would use a sharp instrument to draw blood somewhere from the body. Let that blood drip on a piece of paper made from the bark of the amate tree, and then burn that paper so that the smoke would convey the offering to the gods in the heavens. As for what was used, there's evidence to suggest that the instrument was purposefully selected to cause the most pain. This meant obsidian knives or a barbed rope to be pulled through an open wound. Another common instrument was a stingray spine, possibly with the venom still intact, which would put the person at risk of necrosis or death without disinfection. And where exactly was this blood taken from? Luckily, the Maya had a complex writing system and kept meticulous records. So we have one glyph, or written symbol, that says it all. Turn on your 12-year-old brains, or don't if your mind's already at age 12 like mine, and witness this. If you're seeing a man's softer parts with three cuts in it, you got it. And if you're a woman who lacks these parts, this relief shows your main option with the aforementioned barbed rope. Two of the most common methods for blood sacrifice were penis and tongue perforation. Common enough that we have multiple images of Maya deities and rulers squatting over bowls and doing wiener stuff. This type of sacrifice was mostly done by high status men and women as a symbol of power. Given the location on the male, this may be related to the ruler's symbolic role in the fertility of cultivated plants, like the all important maize, which you might know as corn. The relationship between the ruler's divine power and his member is evident in the fact that at certain Maya sites, this glyph is used in the title of the king. These glyphs show various names of kings, with a title included that translates to something like sky penis. Not super subtle. We even see this title in women's names, which would suggest that it was used as a designation of a royal line. By the time the Spanish arrived, this practice was still occurring and documented in their writings. Francisco Jimenez, writing in the colonial period, says, quote, I saw the sacrifice. They took a chisel and wooden mallet, took out his penis, and cut it in three parts." End quote. 
While Requejo Salcedo, writing in 1640, says, quote, They make a hole in the foreskin of the penis with a fish spine, and through these, with a cotton cord, they all thread themselves together. At this point, my general emotion can be summed up as, ah, whatever you may believe in. I'm gonna guess the Mayans were just a little bit more hardcore in showing their devotion. As always, remember, history isn't just kings and dates. It's a story of you and me, just in different circumstances. One big soap opera, and we should learn it that way. Follow me on Instagram, join the conversation on Reddit, and consider becoming a patron at patreon.com. I just want to curl up in a fetal position. Owie.